Hello there, welcome to episode 34 of Nevermind the Bullens. My name's Mike Peters, this is your bite-sized Everton uh, podcast and vodcast. Uh, recording this immediately uh, after the uh, fantastic away win at Wolves. Uh, lots to talk about. Firstly, um, a correction, uh, which my brother has pointed out to me, a regular listener to this podcast, thank you Simon, uh, that Abdoulaye Decoré's goal, which I said in the last episode, uh, his goal on Saturday against Rotherham was his first goal for the club, wasn't because of course he scored away at Fulham uh, back in November so uh, thank you for that correction uh, more of Abdullah Decore later um, terrific win tonight really you know I have to say against the odds really when you looked at the, the the team selection and the formation an hour before the game or well, we spent an hour certainly I did before the game trying to work out what the formation was uh, given the personnel that we had available no Dominic Calvert-Lewin Richarlison uh, not fit Opting not to start with Jeng Tosin, which I found a little bit of a strange one, given that he'd scored on Saturday, could have scored two, but for a, a linesman's flag. Um, but nonetheless, you know, we've got the result. Um, Alex Awobi uh, starts the game brilliantly and, and did what we've been sort of, what he's been kind of threatening to do for a little bit of a while now in terms of getting the ball wide on the right, playing the ball in and continuing his run. Um, great to have Luca Dean back. It just shows yet again what his, uh, you know, what he brings to us in terms of attacking and his, I think that's his fourth or fifth assist in, I think, nine nine games or something daft like that. He's far better, statistically the best in terms of left-backs against the likes of Andy Robertson and, and Ben Chilwell, etc. Uh, in the Premier League this season. Um, and it shows how much we, how we've missed him. Lovely cross and a terrific finish from Alex Iwobi on the run as well. Really good. Rui Patricio, no, absolutely no chance with that one. Um, disappointing to have made such a good start to then give a, a goal away, give the equaliser away. And Ben Godfrey's going to have to learn from that one because he got caught ball watching um, and left... Um, left Ruben Neves unmarked at the, at the back post and he was just able to slam that home and did well because he's a good player um, but it looked like it was going to be one of those games that was was sort of heading towards a draw which at the start of the game you know we know how good Wolves are you know they've been excellent for the last couple of years even though they're not quite the machine this season that they that they have been in in the last couple of years um, but nonetheless they they were still a very very good side very solid Premier League side um, so you know you'd go well actually personnel mm, you know difficult team to go difficult place to go uh, given our record there over the past couple of years hasn't been that great taking a point out of that you'd have gone happy days but then Big Mick Keane steps up with a fantastic header and a brilliant cross from Andre Gomez as well hopefully that can be the first of a number of assists for him uh, this season uh, and I'm delighted for Michael Keane because he got a, a little bit of stick after Rotherham on Saturday where he'd not been quite at the level that he has been this season uh, but terrific to see him get another goal and really contributing uh, from centre half as well that's what his fourth goal of the season um, interesting that he said immediately after the game that he um, that we hadn't had a chance to practice in the formation that we, that we played tonight Night, sort of playing it more of a what was it a four three three was it a four four two it was very fluid formation but still um, great to see him uh, get that goal as well um, I've mentioned Luca Dean but obviously you know it is great to have him back no question about it worth mentioning it again um, and I said in the last episode that this was going to be a good marker for us in terms of how far we've come since that dreadful performance or non performance um, at Wolves in in uh, in July, which spelled the death now for a, a number of a number of people, um, and how far we've come tonight. And tonight, you know, we've really managed to grind out a result that actually we was we were competitive. We were always in the game. We weren't really creating a huge amount because we lacked that real focal point up front. So Gilfie Sigurdsson did his best, but we were getting down the flanks and we were getting balls in the box. There was just nobody to really stretch the Wolves' defence. Everything was being played in front of them. Uh, and I've I've never quite understood the, the concept of a false nine unless you're playing with a Lionel Messi and a Neymar and a Luis Suarez where you can you've got players that are just running constantly running little channels and lines and stuff. It's difficult to play that, but we had to play that tonight, or did we? I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, you know, at the bottom end of the day, we've got a result. But as a marker for where we were to where we're at now, it shows how far we've come. You look at the lead table, and we're a point from the top of the league sorry actually no United have won so we're, we're four points off but still you know that is a remarkable um, sort of turnaround in, in six months um, 
obviously the big difficulty now obviously no Alan uh, for the next couple of weeks although he is back in training which is great to hear no Abdoulaye Decore uh, for the game at Villa on uh, now on Sunday of course uh, because he, his suspension tonight he had to just take one for the team there that was one of those who's just going to um, I think it was Semedo running rings around through the middle of the park um, and again midfield is an area that we are still struggling a little bit particularly without Alan and now we're going to struggle on Sunday without Abdoulaye Decore as well Villa are a good team playing extremely well this season and that's going to be a tough, tough game for us on uh, on Sunday. It might be worth it. deploying Mason Holgate back into his defensive midfield position that he played so well for a couple of games uh, last season uh, on Sunday because that's where we may need him. Now Seamus Coleman coming on, so he, he can probably play on Sunday. Certainly we've got Ben Godfrey could switch over there if, if need be. Um, but the last two league games, when you look at them, um, uh, games of fine margins, really. Um, one we've come out on top of, uh, tonight uh, one we didn't come out on top of a- against West Ham where really a point probably would have been fair on, on in both in both games and it was just a case of who took their chances we took ours tonight and we didn't have many we barely had any touches in the in the Wolves penalty area because of the way we'd set up but nonetheless we've taken our chances we've taken three points and actually if you'd looked at those two games West Ham at home and Wolves away and said we'll take four points from that I think we'd have probably taken that I think any sort of sensible pragmatic Evertonian would do obviously we want to win every game but we have to be realistic in terms of the squad that we've got the depth that we've got injuries etc um, and it's a fantastic result you know another away win and our away form has been good this season for the most part and to win that without uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin uh, without Alan, without Richarlison for 75 minutes um, is a terrific terrific result and should really instill a lot of confidence uh, in the players um, quick word on the uh, FA Cup draws uh, of course which took place on uh, Monday night um, all you really want is a home draw isn't it really that's all you can ask for and particularly when the fourth and fifth rounds are drawn together we could end up with obviously we are, I've got Sheffield Wednesday in the fourth round we could end up with Wickham in the fifth round but Let's be fair, when the, with them struggling right at the bottom of the championship and Spurs flying uh, in the Premier League, it's a good chance that we're going to end up with Tottenham at home. But still, we've already beaten Tottenham away from home once this season. No reason why we can't go and do it again. So, not an easy draw by any stretch of the imagination, but certainly one um, that we can win. So, on to uh, Villa on Sunday. Obviously, that game uh, postponed a day from, um, uh, because of obviously all the issues that they're having with COVID. So, at this point, it's, you know, throw a six to start as to who's going to play for them, depending on who pulls up and who doesn't. But nonetheless, gives us an extra day's rest um, ahead of that game after after tonight, which is, is good for us. Uh, they've obviously had a game postponed this week, but obviously a lot of their players aren't going to be fully fit. And we've seen... Other clubs, the issues that they've had with COVID after effects, the likes of Newcastle with Alan San Maximum, um, Jamal Lascelles, etc., didn't play for weeks after that. So it could have affected some of their players more than just the you know two weeks and then you back back fit kind of thing. Um, but a, a real chance for us again, and one that we've got to take. You know, Villa traditionally not the greatest of grounds for us. Um, you know, we've had a couple of good days there and I've been there. I've been there for a couple of bad ones as well. I think it is my most visited away ground, Villa Park. Um, but the way we're playing at the minute, we've certainly got uh, one to uh, answer back after last season, which was a really disappointing performance when we could have gone top of the league and we s- surrendered quite meekly on a Friday night, losing 2-0. Um, so certainly, obviously a lot to gain and a chance again to really put pressure on the top of the league and put ourselves right in the mix there for those top floor places. So then, until episode 35, which will follow after the uh, Villa game on Sunday afternoon, uh, you can get in touch about whatever you want uh, via email nmtbpod at gmail.com at nmtbpod on Twitter, or you can leave me a, a message, a voice message, and we will endeavour to include those. And we'll be able to get one of them, actually. Uh, you can click that on the in the episode description of the podcast, uh, or you can send me a video message if you so desire. There you go, via the email, and I'll try and include that as well. That'd be lovely to include that in the vodcast. Brilliant. Uh, until then... Come on, you blues.